This is Talk Star Wars. The official podcast at talkstarwars.co.uk. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Stephen, and welcome to Talk Star Wars. Or, as Mon Mothner's boyfriend Wolf would say, Nuchne, 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 Stephen, Jop, Revan, Ho, Wars, Ilya, Jop. And who else is here with me? No one. We've got... <laughs> I think my brain just exploded. <laughs> you know, I was thinking... Wolf was Mon Mothma's boyfriend, wasn't she? Wasn't he? What? Mon Mothma's a human. Oh, oh and that... Wolf's from a different franchise. <laughs> all, that, all that good work you did, Steve. Your fan, I, your fan I kind of saw... I thought the irony of mixing up Star Trek and Star Wars would be... You might as well have had Linda Evans and Morph. <laughs> <laughs> Look, no, everyone knows I know nothing about Star Wars. I thought I'd mix up two franchises. Oh, <laughs> you right. did a good job. You've lost all of your show opening privileges, Stephen. <laughs> right, I'm taking over again. Hello, everybody. The voice was good, though. Welcome back. Yeah, yeah the voice. that was good. And for all I know, it was spot on Klingon. I've got no idea. Yeah, no, with no frame of reference. I am now on traduka.com, which is the official Klingon English translation. Oh, is that really, an official thing still going? You put a lot of work into your bits, Stephen. That's all I'm going to well, say. Well, I typed in, hello, 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 I'm Stephen, and welcome to Star Wars in the English section and hit translate. <laughs> if that constitutes a lot of work, then yeah. Well, that's I did. lovely. Well played. I've done it, yeah. I'm sure yeah. Star Trek on this episode of the uh, Talk Star Wars podcast is not going to upset anybody. Absolutely. He says, no. bracing for the fall. There's one thing we know about fandoms. They are accepting really and tolerant. accepting and understanding. <laughs> yeah. right. Can someone just tell me how you pronounce wars in Klingon is Y-L-J-A-T-L-H. Fine. I said, we'll, we'll yah. Yah. Yeah. We'll yah. No, we'll yah. Okay. Well, J I, would be a Y yeah. as in Nordic. We're going to shelve like the like plans that. for Talk Star Trek. I've, that's <clears> it. I'm drawing a line under it right now. What about right. Banter Star Galactica? <laughs> no, you, you can keep that one. We'll, we'll do that at some point, Rob, and you'll right. be in the big seat. Right. right cool. Welcome back, everybody, to episode 85. Thank you, Steve, for bringing us in so smoothly, and I am not reading that out loud. Um, <laughs> before we get started this week, we need to say goodbye to a legendary filmmaker. Um, unusual timing this week, because I just made a big deal last week out of watching Poltergeist. And it, on uh, the 26th, I think, was that Sunday? Um, Saturday. Uh, Saturday. Saturday, yeah. We it was lost a, Toby it was Hooper. A, it was a very mm. popular member of the podcast's birthday. Oh, actually. of course it was. Yeah, happy birthday, yeah. Paul. I love that movie, and God rest his soul. I love it too, and he was, he was Somewhere a, a dwarf is talking to him through the ether right now. I would, I would hope so. And not the, the one from the, uh, not the one from Twin Peaks. Anyway, um, Toby Hooper, you will be missed. So you are a legend, and um, and we look back fondly at your work, <laughs> Stephen. Behave. <laughs> All right, let's move on to some thank yous. So, oh, one just came in actually before we kicked off. So I'm going to include this chap's name. So YouTube subscribers, this week there is a bit of a story behind this. I got there was a really odd comment on the show last week and at the end the the commenter was um very um complimentary about the show said the show was really nice and it was a shame we didn't have more subscribers gave me some advice on what to do to make the channel more attractive i followed their advice and the subscriber count immediately started going up so clearly it worked and sometimes it's good to listen to what people are telling you what was it because i need to employ some of that i'll share it with you later mate um so I just That's want to say a big nudity. thank you to no nudity. A big thank you to Dark Hoffman, Adam Heath, Danny Mansarelli, and Antonio Pardo for subscribing to our YouTube channel this week. Um, hopefully, it's just thumbnails, Steve. It's just all about having big bold thumbnails um, that they yes. can see when they're scrolling. Steve bites so. that, I do that already, but there's only so much you can do with a butterfly. Indeed, indeed. Well, and I'm not doing clickbait, making it look nine times the size of my no, head or anything like uh, that. This person just said to, to me, that. just make, just use big bold text, make sure it's, it, people can see that it's Star Wars as they're flying by. And I, I've made the change immediately, and it's clearly had an impact. So thank you very much cool. for that uh, for that advice. And also thanks to um, Casey James Bennett for liking our Facebook 
page this week. Now, Casey is from South Carolina, like our friend Mike Messalani, who we spoke with last week, had written in last week. So I'm going to suggest if Casey and Mike don't already know each other, and, and I know South Carolina is a huge place, but maybe there was a recommendation involved in this. If you don't already know each other, then you should form the uh, the South Carolina TSW contingent. So, um, or get married. Or get married. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably one step further than I would have gone straight out the gate. But yeah, thank Not you. Not to each other necessarily. They should have the Macarena at their wedding because they could go, uh, Mike Mestalani. Don't be a wedding planner. Well, do, but do it back in the 90s. All right. On your own time. So thank you, Casey. Okay, reviews. Um, we haven't had any reviews this week, but if you want to take part in our reviews, our five star reviews, get the Ron Burgundy policy. So whatever you write in there, we will read for you verbatim. So if you want to promote something, that's where to do it. Just keep those reviews nice and clean. And that takes us on to listener comms. Tonight's show, I think, is going to be a short one because we've got a bit of a meet-up afterwards for Force Friday. So we've yeah, got boy. two bits of listener Which Paul and I weren't invited and to. Then some news. It yeah, was I'm looking for it. Coordinated on social media, Steve. I'm not surprised you missed it. Yeah, I'm <laughs> looking for that too. Excuse me. I'm on Twitter. I'll have you know. I'm well aware. You were so close to the right app there, weren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I don't close. do... Like the I guy who invented um, six up. Oh. What do they, they call it? The it crowd? It's not Why, hang on a minute. Why didn't I get an email for this? If it's on the... If it's on the... It's been listed as an event, yeah? Yeah. Okay. I didn't get anything. Honest to God. Do you normally get emails from the events? I'm sure I do. Hmm. I don't know. I didn't realise you did because I'm... I've never had one myself, I've, but I've been... So you're going up there, what, I mean, uh, No, you've ruined it. Get in your car uh, Rob now. Rob liked find one of my on, tweets. Find us on I, might have, I might have had a drop of fire water. <laughs> <laughs> what a, sh- nice. what a surprise. Right. Any Listener comms. Okay. Which one is it? I'm just checking where we are because I want Steve to read... No, it's, no. Not, it's not this one. It's the it's the okay. this that's the second one. This is the first one. All right. Well, this one oh, is one of my from fans. this first one's from James. Somebody else can read it, but I just want to set James up now. James emailed in last week. You know, we had that curious email address, and I couldn't quite decipher what it said. And we went through all the. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It, James' full name is James uh, Weibel, and the right. email address was James uh, J Weibel is now. Uh, James. Yes. James is is amazing. I've had a couple of emails from James this week. James has gone right back to episode one. Is binge listening to the show. Hello, boy. Seriously, like every single episode from the start. Spoilers: and It gets good about thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's already passed that, so he's he's been motoring. Oh, gets through. better after. He. Um, I would skip to episode eight. Yeah, I hit my stride. <laughs> he's really enjoying. He's really enjoying what he's hearing so far, and he's very active. So he's, he's emailing me saying, "On this subject of this, you know, it's a conversation we had nearly two years ago." So I'm great s- struggling yeah. to remember. He knows we've got a joint age of two hundred and twelve, right? <laughs> <laughs> we we don't remember the start of this podcast. <laughs> maybe we should. Um, maybe we should start <laughs> totaling up our emotional ages, and that would be a lot better than. Fourteen, seven. <laughs> we, we know. <laughs> Always on brand, Mister. That's Wayne. it, mate. I'm going to start a website called Emotionally Thirteen and beat Rob. How will you beat me? <laughs> well, because I'm more, more immature. <laughs> My voice is deeper for a start. <laughs> at that right. point, no, it isn't. Let's get back to James's email. <laughs> Who would Rob? Um, excuse me, Paul. You sound yeah. like the most sane one out of all of us this evening. Yeah. Would you like yeah. to take spoilers? James' <laughs> email. Indeed. Right, from James. When I tweeted, in brackets, from my author's Twitter, Ooh. about Luke putting on, putting on Ray, how, what, 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 about yeah. Luke putting on, putting Ray, putting on, Ray on Jakku. Jakku. Sorry, yeah. I didn't spell check any of this. <clears throat> Apparently not. She would have been his daughter, and he gave her away so he could be a better Jedi. And it's been tearing him apart since. Ooh. Uh, I'll also give another perspective that might help explain the first. When the original trilogy came out, Christianity was widespread. Thinking it black and white, light versus dark, way was normal. I'm really getting confused here. Sorry, JJ Abraham C was making Star Wars for the next generation. Uh, while that normally means poor plotting, angst, drama, and pretty people, consider it from a different perspective. Many people consider themselves spiritual uh, that, rather than belonging to a certain religion in America. What? Uh, 
a black, oh, sorry, and white, a black and white religion simply does not match up with reality as a much more balanced grey area point of view does. True. Look at Qui-Gon talking about greed as a powerful alloy. The Bendu in Star Wars Rebels, Jedi, Jedi only being able to defeat a Sith when the, they release the passion of love on friends. Mark, you've got to <laughs> you got to look at the context on these when you publish them. There's punctuation in there that you're ignoring, look Paul. At the, 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 look at, <laughs> you can only do so much. Gun, talking about greed as a powerful ally. The yep. Bendu in Star Wars Rebels. Yep. Jedi only ever being able to defeat a Sith when they release the passion of love for friends and family. What if Luke was listening to Obi-Wan and Yoda and trying to pass on Jedi propaganda, like it forever do- dominating your destiny and giving up his daughter so he has no attachments, and it falling apart with his own nephew? He talks to his father, maybe even Bendu, thinks about how Yoda and Obi-Wan were wrong about Vader and Luke having to kill him. It's a lot harder to get an in-depth idea across with twitter though laugh out loud have a good one fellas james so yes, the i've got a break this down. characters I, yeah we need the cliff down. notes on this one right might ray have been luke's daughter who he leaves on jakku in order to become a better jedi himself before it all goes to sith and he regrets leaving her and reconsiders <laughs> what the jedi should be from anthony jenkins oh that's no <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> OMG. See what I mean about that's he like, can only do too much. That's like when you so. read forceful message here, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Sent Sit from, from iPhone. iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> Jinx. This email is confidential and the content is contained yeah. within. Please think twice before printing. Anyway. <laughs> Somewhere in there there's an awesome question. There is a good question. There is a good I, question. I would I would say one thing though. The the idea of there being more people who are considered spiritual than than Christian in America, I I would love to see the data on that because I can't. No, find yeah, no, 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 no. I well after the after the that bit was bolted on, I I kind of yeah. did disagree. Like, with a, my like within Hollywood, maybe. But yeah, no, I think that I think that's a bit of a <laughs> yes. Um, I think that's a bit of a. Um, yes, but a they deliver wonderful movies. <laughs> wishful think- I don't know if that's wishful thinking or just the circles that James travels in, perhaps that kind of guide yeah, his perspective. Uh, but all the data, all the data suggests that it's. Upwards of sixty-five, maybe even as high as eighty-five percent Christian in America. So yeah, don't don't big old place. don't crash Christian. the numbers over this too much. I think it's anecdotal. No, no, no. I think he's saying you know at the time probably um, religion was people a little bit more died died in the wall religious than they are today. And that you know, I mean, yeah, I'll go with that. I, I say within I'd Hollywood, I, I would go with a, a bit Star Wars more, fan to have that, wouldn't you? I, I as I agree with what he's saying. Like more more people consider themselves spiritual than belonging to a certain religion in America. Well, anyone listening to this podcast or the majority probably would be more on the spiritual side than devout religious. I know that's stereotyping and generalizing. Yeah, within, but fa- within, let's say within fandom, I'll go with that. And within you know, yeah, within, because we're uh, more scientific, aren't we? We like the space thing. It it kind of lends itself to science, and science is reality and not some made up hocus pocus. But yes, I get it. Hello, Christian listeners. Bye. <laughs> Welcome to the debate in the we wrong did lo- part we of the did question love podcast. We did love having you here when we were balanced. <laughs> All right. Going back, I don't anyway, think question. she's his daughter. I don't want her to be. I think it's just too, it's too, even, it's it's too not easy, isn't want. it? It's, it's simply, a, I don't think that's the case. No, right. I don't think so. Let's look Plus at, bloodline is a bit. Let's look at the way James has framed it for a second. Yeah. Let's play with it for a second and look at the way James has framed Ooh, this thing. So, Ooh, bye. If she was, and his motivation was he needed to become a better Jedi by removing her from his life because she is an attachment, could that have been, if that, if there was a chance that she was his daughter, would that have been something that would have motivated Luke? I don't think those two things marry, though, if you pardon the expression. Like him wanting to be a better Jedi and him having a daughter. If he's spread, if if like James said, he's part, he's been trying to pass on the Jedi propaganda up until that point. He wouldn't have a daughter. He wouldn't have attachments. No, you're right. There is that's um, almost contradictory of yeah the the tenets of the Jedi, isn't it? I will say Can one I thing say that I really wrong, love wrong. Um, the idea that he that Luke encountered Bendu along the way. I love that idea. Yeah, I really like that. Is he the big? Um, yeah, Beauty Tom, and the Beast. Big thing. Tom Baker, Tom Beauty and the Big Troll Bear. Forget that. Yeah, yeah. I wonder I, I if that would be a um, thing. I have a deal breaker for the whole Luke right. Ray daughter father thing. Go on. Him. There's no way Luke would train his daughter to go and fight and get a limb lopped off or get choky throaty thinged, force crushy throat, force crushy throated. Mm. There's no way. 
that's the biggest hole in all of the daughter father thing. This he's is not actually... going to train it. Go on. This have is I said quite... good. No, no, no. I was say of course you have. Yeah, yeah. like like normal. It's um. This is actually quite the knot. This question, isn't it? Because the more you pull on one side of it, the tighter it gets. So, mm. for a start, Luke, prob- if he was dedicated to the Jedi way, he wouldn't have had a daughter. Yeah. And, I'm talking uh, if he's devout enough to use to like like James said quite rightly spread the propaganda like you know to to buy into the propaganda mm. if he's that devout he's not having a daughter unless something's happened to change to alter his position because I think that he would have been on the opposite side of that equation from even before the end of the original trilogy because if what Yoda and Obi Wan were trying to get him to do was the Jedi way, and I'd argue it isn't, um, he abandoned that immediately and used compassion and love for his father. Yes, indeed. To save his father. So I think Jedi, I think Luke came out of Jedi very much. That's where they threw the spirituality in, though, and the emotional a, bond. A new, Yeah, he, <clears throat> he came out of it the, a very much a new type of Jedi Knight. And we didn't even know if that's what, how he would be categorised, did we, at the time? At the end of Jedi, it was like, well, the Jedi may as well have died then and there because he was no longer fitting into what we would later meet in the prequels, into that framework of no attachments, no no familiar attachments. All he had was attachments. All he had was friends and family and loved ones around him. So Luke was a, was a mile away from that ideal that would have, um, led him to make the decision. I've got to drop Ray off. I've got to get rid of this last attachment. I don't see that. Mm. No, the other thing is, Mark, a small aspect of the relationship he had with his father. He's not going to emulate that. Yeah, no, I can't imagine that would be the thing. <laughs> he he learned he learned as he went, Luke, and he grew incredibly fast as a character, didn't he? Mm. It's going to be interesting to see the amount of people that bring up this episode if we were all wrong in a couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't. Oh, well, in 85, you said. Yeah. Well, James will get there as well. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be a couple of months. It'll be a couple of months after the movie comes here. It'll be like, oi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I can't, I don't see, it's a very interesting idea that it could have been, that that could be something that would motivate Luke. I can't imagine what would happen that would pull Luke back to the original Jedi way and then leave him with the line in The Last Jedi that the Jedi have to end. Because that seems... Uh, You still don't know the context of that line. We don't, but it's a very big... It's a very big leap to Mm. think that he would um, would get all Jedi banging the Jedi drum and then say, no, they need to end. I'd have thought that was a position he'd have taken at the end of Return of the Jedi, to be honest, that the Jedi needed to end and all the propaganda needed to die. And the, no, and the I mean, at that point, he was, still a, he was still a very, very young man and he'd only just become a Jedi and he thought he was encapsulating what it should be, so he was probably celebrating it internally. He's a much older, wiser character now and he's looked at the politic of the situation and the, how everything has been boiling across the galaxy because of this situation. And he's realised that, okay, as much as they think they have a perfect science and a perfect order, it's far from it. And as much as they think they are righteous, their side of the balance doesn't necessarily agree with what balance might be and so on and so forth. So, you know, age, you know, begets wisdom and so on. He could just be saying, it might just be that we haven't got the end of the sentence. He might say, it's time for the Jedi to end to this horrendous constipation that I've got. I've been eating too many pork. <laughs> oh my God, they bind you up. <laughs> pork bound. You don't know. Oh, it's time wow. for Je- it's time for Jedi to, the Jedi to end this war on low prices. <laughs> <laughs> Come to Luke's discount pork warehouse. Yeah. Teeny tables. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's time for the Jedi to end. There's always a, a song. Song. Pork Ooh, FS. If, if Luke is discounting <laughs> porks, Luke, Luke all didn't I get the email about Force Friday, from. didn't he? The suns will come out tomorrow. <laughs> Paul, I think I think the point you made is incredibly insightful and. Because, oh, what about owls? Um, well, they chop liver. You're the comedy relief in the background. But <laughs> okay. after Return relief. of the Jedi, like years after Return of the Jedi, Luke went away and did the required reading and learned a lot more about the Jedi. And he seemed to have been um, compiling some information, which he has with him on Arc 2 in 
in the tree cave. Yes. Seems to have his own little library, doesn't he? So he's definitely educated himself. So perhaps he set off down the path to rebuild the Jedi Order and then he started to learn about some of the things that may have limited them and how that was in direct opposition to the values that he had growing up. He might be being bullish. The order. It's time for the Jedi to end and I'm going to show you what they should become. It might be quite a bullish statement. You know, mm. we just we don't know yet. Well, that's, that, <clears> Rob, that's yeah, similar I, to... I get the impression they've had an argument or... Um, she, her, 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 um, what's the word that her feeling of, oh, is this it? You know, um, she said she was this way. That what was it? Hero. Yeah. 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 I think that she's like dis- disappointment. I think she's like, Ugh, and then he walks out and she's like, great. This and Rob, it. your position was that perhaps he's Before, almost trying to drive her in a way. Yeah. Her. I was, I, I kind of, I went along the lines of that trailer line is part of a bigger sentence about uh with with a kind of condition like if this can't happen if this can't happen then it's time for the jedi to end if we can't adapt to the changing nature of the force or whatever something along those lines mm. so there's a bit there's so that i know one truth bit it's time for the jedi to end yeah so it's not the whole it's, it it is the whole sentence but it's not yeah there's a condition presented. in there if we can't yeah, it's if not, we can't it's not do present such such. Fully. yeah and we we can't afford to discount what happened to Ben Solo as well, because no, what, ha- what happened to Ben Solo will definitely frame Luke's position on all of this stuff, because he managed to lose one to the dark side yes. on his watch, and mm-hmm. that hasn't happened very often. It's happened twenty odd times in the story that we know of, right? In the movies, the Lost Twenty, and then yeah. there's Anakin, and now there's Ben. So Luke's managed to lose one on his watch, which. Is a huge failure for this um, this new Jedi Order that was very much in its infancy, and he's already dropped the ball. So you can see why he's getting um, antsy. Yeah, and are there any Jedi? Are there any sorry Sith or baddies that didn't come from the intention of being good? Because don't you need you always need them to convert across to the dark side to have the balance? Well, Maul so, didn't. Didn't he? Was he always a bad guy? Yeah. Maul okay. was raised to be Sith by Palpatine. He, he he wasn't like he was some innocent little choir boy that wanted to learn about the Force. He was just raised to be enraged. Yeah, okay. But, um, interesting. Yeah. An interesting position, James. Very interesting. Um, I'm not sure. And maybe Last Jedi will reframe some of this for us. And maybe there'll be some stories to come out in the expanded storytelling that will give us an idea of what else Luke has been up to in the meantime. But I don't think we can take the leap to um, to believe that Luke would have do- dropped a daughter off if he'd had her. On Plus the there's bloodline to contend with as well. Yeah, the timing Which of is, it. That's the thing. doesn't bloodline, quite work. You have to divide everything by bloodline and it breaks a lot of theories. Mm-hmm. For sure. Okay, James, thank you very much. I'm sure we'll be hearing from you again very, very yeah. soon. And I apologise for reading your question so eloquently, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get this out of the way, Steve. Right, thank you, guys. So, pray silence, minions. Um, <laughs> this is silence. such tosh. <laughs> I this find is this from I'm the, this. Um, I'm loving this. This is from the lovely he he's Anthony people. Jenkins. Now, now just, just pray pray silence for this because this Anthony you Jenkins I've looked up and, no not only this guy I've been researching this guy Anthony Jenkins yeah, and not only is he highly intelligent extremely comely but <laughs> also he, he's no slouch in bed um, oh, so my. this is not something that I've concocted and it's probably re- replete in all your feelings out there and I just apologise for the rest of the team that you have to put up with them but that's nothing to do with it okay so Anthony he thinks he's people Anthony <laughs> Speak thusly, I suppose. <sighs> Pull your line. There you go too far, sir. <laughs> anyway, get on, get on with it before one of us dies. <laughs> Firstly, uh, you're my favourite podcast. You mean me? No, you're my favourite podcast. As weird as it sounds, <clears throat> <clears throat> silence. As weird as it sounds, Steve is the most sane of all of you. No, that's not what it says. In that the word I, it's not the word I would use. <laughs> stop um, re, stop it, rewriting. It's not the word I would use. It's straight even, up delusional. I'm going to even give him the fact that he missed the N off. It's fine. 
Here are a few thoughts. You guys know way more than me. So if anything sounds dumb because I haven't read all the book or TV series, I apologise. Are you speaking now, Steve, or are you still reading the letter? <laughs> I'm reading. <laughs> Very good, Paul. Um, Kenobi movie, number one. As Steve said, get Ben the hell off Tatooine. Who says looking after Luke doesn't include an off-planet preemptive strike on a threat? What if Leia is in danger and in need of some Jedi she's? I don't know what she's is, but I'm giving it to him. Sure. And oh, I hate Stan. Right, I need to just say, I I changed the word shiz from another word. Thank because you. I knew if I'd left it in the original form, we can you'd, bleep you'd things just out. It. No, we can't because yeah, it's worked for me. Yeah, exactly. No, but, I like, and oh, Mark, yeah, we can Jedi do all oh. What if Leia is in danger and in need of some Jedi sh? Now you've got two bleeps <laughs> now for your insolence. <laughs> right, it's funny and people love the bleeps. We did a whole episode on it. Stop being at no, I won't say. Right. <laughs> do we know in canon how can no he finds out vader is alive that would be a pretty awesome scene to have in the movie and we could possibly see ben struggle with what he should do upon hearing the news finish the job or try to turn him back can somebody tell me what jl J- oh my God. the last jedi oh. the last jedi thank you steve oh, is the most sane of all <laughs> no, <I'm> just reread <laughs> him just i just want to make sure <laughs> why don't you just take a little bit of time to finish words off what could Great oh person. that's it right burn your fan base down to the ground you've got <laughs> no, one not person in your corner you i just you could have done your job i just copy and paste Anthony. baby right number three i've heard the idea of snoke being a super powerful brainwasher pulling gra- crazy jedi mind tricks on kylo and others being thrown around i think it's a solid theory mind control is a jedi ability snoke looks like he could be a jedi luke is hiding to prevent snoke taking hold of his mind I believe that he may be based on the character the mule in the classic sci-fi novels that any Star Wars director should have read, the Foundation series by Isaac Asimov. Anyway, long live Steve and and the Talk Star Wars podcast. And thanks for making my life that little bit more awesome, Stephen. Um, Breakdown. What, Mark? Uh, Note from Mark. I find this Stephen worshipping to be deeply disturbing. Don't yes. ad lib. I find I th- your lack of Steve disturbing. I think I speak for all of us when I say now? that. Where's your cut and paste now? Where's your cut and paste? People don't write their that. own breakdown, Steve. I have to do that part myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> so should Obi-Wan be leaving Tatooine? Can we get that first? Well, is he, uh, 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 Robert. All oh, right. Sorry, Steve's running. I'm in charge. Steve's running the thing. <laughs> Sorry, you, you brought me in, Steve. So am I, I'm answering question one, yeah? Uh, yes, please. Okay. Um, no. That's no. the short answer. You've you have one. Ever you given. have one. If he has one job, and he does anything that can take his mind off that job, it's a bit of a dud for me. Right. So you're not listening to all our listeners. Then you obviously want him to leave the planet. No, I don't want him to leave the planet. That's why he said no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know I left a couple of weird, obscure hints, Steve, but I was hoping you'd be along with it. Um, but <laughs> no, left little I... clues, like negative words rather than positive. So um, you want a boring, sand-based film? No, I, I think the, 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 the planet's a pretty options, big Steve. place. Pretty binary big place, sunset. Tatooine, as far as I understand it. So, you know, I know it's sand as far as I can see, but it's not to say they can't make a more interest an, an interesting setting on a sand planet. What about it's an avatar system? or a big forest world? And <gasps> yet, well, no, it's, it's an honest question, right? It's, a, it's yes, entirely we, foresty. They don't go yeah, off planet it, to a desert. Ab- um, avatar two is like, right. Okay. We've done the forest world. We're going underwater now. So, right, like, so it's literally, so it's literally every movie is a different setting, but they don't well, mix and match. It's right? on a different planet, isn't it? The second yeah, one was. So that's fine. But, okay. So that's fine. So it's on a different planet. That's They're different not going to do it All in I'm the same saying, planet. All I'm saying is exactly that for the Kenobi movie. You can have an interest. If you can't write an interesting setting in a sand and a sand planet that size, I'm not, entirely convinced that you should mm. like there should there should be a you know any a, a writer worth their salt should be able to write a compelling story regardless of setting here here it should, it's not about setting it you could write you could be on tatooine write a decent yeah. community for obi-wan to be a part of and then you could be yeah. anywhere just write or him a to community. be on the bridge or yeah or even the ones to be on this like a fringe one 
you know yeah. doesn't have to be part of the community in a in a large way i think it would be um yeah, to me that would be compelling drama if it was a part of that community and then something happened to break it that would and that yeah if that ends up pushing him if out the nearest the supermarket was next door next planet then you could pop off but other than that <laughs> There is I have can, I, can, I just, can I interject? I have business in the little system. <laughs> can I interject? You, you can interject all you want. This is your right. question, mate. Right. Can anyone hear Jen? Um, like, What's she calling you? you? No. Can anyone hear Jen uh, like moulding her brownies? I'm trying to do it without a euphemism. Oh, in there. <laughs> I thought that was. A, <laughs> I thought that was. No, I can't no, hear Jen moulding her brownies. She's stirring her I brownies could. at the moment and it's making a lot of noise. Is that all right? No, I can S- stir my me. brownies. No, I can't hear a thing, mate. You're good. <laughs> Excellent. Right, tell, that's right. Tell, okay. her, tell her they need Paul? to be nice domed. Answer question one, Paul. Oh, uh, no. For the lovely Anthony, thank you. No. For, for reasons the same as Rob? No, uh, not entirely. I mean... Uh, a different point of view. Just? I'm not... I'm, I'm, I mean, everyone knows I'm not entirely keen on the movie anyway. Sorry. And all that. I'd rather have a Jawa movie that was entirely based on Tattoo Wings. <laughs> they could be in it. They could yeah, be in an entirely Ben becomes a window cleaner. Ben yeah. becomes a rogue trader. The Adventures of Craig the Jawa. <laughs> and the movie could be called Rogue Trader. Why have I heard that before? Rogue Trader. Anyway. I don't know. Oh, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was Ewan McGregor. <laughs> yeah, it was actually. Yeah, yeah there you it go. was. Um, Liam Neeson, uh, not Liam Neeson. What's his name? Nick Leeson. Uh, Liam Baring. Oh, well, look, see, it's all one big connected thing. Nick Leeson, seven hundred million he stole. Steve, let's move it along. Stay focused. Right, if you're hosting, stay on target. Well, you, um, you, we need your answer then. I what? I don't think that it should go off of Tatooine because I think that sort of betrays what um, Obi Wan has done. I think we're being prepped to accept. When we're, be, we're being educated about things like the Barish Vow in the comic books now, I think we're being taught to accept that he is going to take a vow to stay there and protect Luke, and that is going to keep him Tatooine side. But listening to fandom over the past couple of weeks since this film was rumoured, most people want him to go off world. I don't get it. No, I don't. It yeah, seems I don't to get be the appeal. Dead I don't get the appeal. against the Obi Wan character, if you ask me. But but the, but I think also like with the with the greatest of love to fandom again, it's like they want things and then you tell them oh how would that work and they're just like you just do it because they don't have to think about how it works they're just yeah. like i'll oh, put a soaker in it it's like okay how would how would you make a soaker work and they're like just put her in yeah they know each other so like, yeah, but that's not that's I'll, not yeah I've but you, made it work you've got a story <clears throat> but the, 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 that's the difference you've at least thought through in terms of coming up with a narrative but like some people just go put her in there they know each other so oh is that all it takes is there Can any worry. scope for luke being kidnapped and then forgetting it afterwards with a some sort of Jedi mind trick. Oh, oh really? And he goes after him. That's too jumping the shark for Star Wars. From a certain point of view. <laughs> Luke anyway. represents. Luke represents is a is a really interesting dramatic tool, right, Luke? And I didn't mean that in the in a derogatory way. But he even just by his presence, even if you don't see him, he represents something very important to the Lars <laughs> and very important to. Ben Kenobi and if you put him in in at risk even in the most casual way like having someone rock up on, t- on Tatooine and say I think I can sense another presence that's enough to trigger Obi-Wan you don't need to see Luke you don't need to physically put that character in peril in the film just the yeah. threat of it at a distance is enough I just had a horrible thought Mark Go on. we're going to have to see a young Luke aren't we maybe not not necessarily I maybe not, not. Doesn't have to be on screen to be referred to, does he? No, um, I guess not. Okay. Do we know the space of time between um, 19, the end of nineteen years? Uh, end of Sith. Oh, nineteen years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, no, no. The end. Of, no, the end of Sith, and when we assume Ben went to Tatooine. Oh, Pretty much immediately, I think. Yeah. It was immediately, and yeah. we can assume he stayed there. Yeah. Yes. Well, he gave the baby, and then he stayed. I think, didn't he? Because yeah, he his, his line in Sith is, "I'll stay and watch over the boy." Right. Okay. And Yoda says, and "Take like, him to his family," and he but, says, "I'll stay." I mean, over him. on the other side of that, there is technology that allows him to do that from a distance, if necessary. Mm-hmm. When did mm. Ben Kenobi lose all his fighting skills and his lightsaber skills? When he became Alec Guinness and he got a bit older. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> because he really was pants after slim. And what, that two finger thing, we forgive him for that. But everyone else was awesome. You mean um, when you say the two finger thing? Do you mean the lightsaber form? No, he yeah. he gave, he gave the snake two tongue, fingers. He does and goes, "Oh, that's scary. Is that all you've got? Bring it." 
Why are you even doing that? It serves no purpose, except I'm going to lop one of those little fingers off. You're just sticking things out. Keep them tucked away. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Keep your hands and arms inside the ride at all times. Exactly. So, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Rob. Um, well said, but completely wrong. But well done. <laughs> right. Um, Funny thing about opinions, Steve. Opinions. Uh, <laughs> well, well, I think you're I like you in sub- that, sub- the lovely Anthony wrong. Jenkins, who <laughs> in no way is affiliated with Stephen Waring whatsoever, is right, and most of the fans are. They'll want it because Mark said it. So anyway, how does Obi Wan learn of Anakin Vader's survival? I think we'll find out in the film. That's my take on this, Rob. Um, I don't know. I think the film is plausible. Um, I can't imagine this is thing. Even though, even if you live a hermited kind of lifestyle, I can't imagine you're not you're completely disconnected from the galactic news. And he's heard him called Darth Vader. Mm-hmm. Thus, when he knows yeah. that when he sees Darth Vader walking around in a suit, he goes, "Ah, oh. mm. finish that." Off. Probably should have. Is it another Darth Vader? Yeah, you're right, Rob. Too many people are overlooking that fact at the moment. Yeah. So yeah. hang on, where's Vader related to Anakin's goal? How would you how so would they, you get in that? Revenge of the Sith. Um, yeah. When they reroute the, you know, they reroute the communication signal to stop the Jedi from being led into a trap. Yeah. At the temple, um, Palpatine refers to Anakin as Darth Vader in one of the holograms that Obi Wan watches. Oh, so he already knows it's called Vader. Yeah. Oh, poopski. In a yeah. file entitled "Exposition," he opened it up, and there was this little video. It's interesting so he, that there's so like he knows a, he survived. There's a kind of willingness to gloss over I mean, it's just i suppose it's just in you know seemingly insignificant lines but that happens a lot even the star mm. wars twitter account's not immune to it so basically it renders question two completely redundant because he already knows yeah well no he knows no, well, no, no, no he doesn't no, know no. the survival until he like i say until he potentially sees uh exactly he knows that anakin has been knighted darth vader by sidious he knows that that's a thing so he knows the guy he fights on mustafar is vader, oh i see what you mean but he right, thinks he, he left him for dead yeah right. so if right. he sees I him on the you. news or if he sees on the news or something who's that I had man, it in my head who's that man in the black suit hmm. his legs off his arm. Yeah. yeah obviously it's before okay that makes yeah. sense there's some oh, time- so yeah. sidious the timelines <laughs> are just amazing there's some um there's some what? stuff where nice. when the twins are born, they're on Polis Massa is exactly the same time as Anakin's being put into that armour. So it yes. then takes them, after that, it takes them some time to sort of go and um, drop the kids off on Alderaan. And then they decide to take Luke to Tatooine and then Yoda has to go into hiding. So you could say if they were waiting for a practical way to learn that Vader was still a thing, he does emerge as sort of Sidious's as the as the Emperor's enforcer, he does emerge as Darth Vader in that mm. period of time. So the chances are they've sat down and they said, look, this Darth Vader, that's Anakin, right? And That's, that's him, that is. <laughs> so that's how they got it practically. But I think this is much more interesting if Obi-Wan learns about it through the Force. And there's no way that that's not a thing. Mm. You know, the, the, I did some research on this and tried to find a canon answer for it, and there isn't one at the moment. It's not a solid one, but there's some legend stuff about Obi Wan reaching out through the Force and feeling Anakin's presence. Is there any scope? And this is a stretch because I know at the begin, at the end of New Hope or the middle bit, he says, "You know, it's been a long time." Blah blah blah. Before they start fighting Vader and Ben, but is there any scope for Vader? and Ben to fight in this movie when he's no. still relatively the same age. Why no, not? come on. No, come on. It's ridic- that's ridiculous. Like the, the whole well, point of the whole point of episode four, the whole thing of Vader is he's not seen, he's not seen Kenobi in some time, but it's, de- it's delivered in dialogue. The last uh, presence in the force. I've not felt in whatever. The last this time I felt was in the presence of my old master. Yeah. Yeah. But it there's no the way it's time. just like, Ooh. Oh, when was that? Oh, the other week. Like, give me a break. No, not the other way. Oh. I mean, it's still 30 years before, or isn't it? You know, they can still... No. It can be relatively close to when he becomes Vader in the physical form. So, like, they have a confrontation. Oh, no, but he'd know where he was then. Yeah. All right. Well, then, in that case, I mean, all this has got to be very cloak and dagger, because anything in the story of this film that gives away Luke's position, or maybe Luke's not even in it at all, is going to be very sketchy, because... Oh, God, it's a real... See, there's lines, there's lines like um, 
Peter Cushing in the original movie when he said, surely you must be dead by now. There's lines in A New Hope that kind of imply that a long time has passed and, mm. and Obi-Wan's been off the clock and no one's seen or heard from him. So they just think that he's gone, you know? Maybe it is a cross-stitch film and it's about Ben's journey into Homecraft. That it needs to be... It needs to be like the Magnificent Seven, and Obi Wan needs to be somebody in there helping out a community and and finding some meaning in his new life. All the while, he's looking after the Lars family and he's keeping the huts away from them, and all of that good stuff that's already out there in canon. And then something re enters his life from outside, from the Empire, from his old life, comes into his new life and destroys the lot. And that's what breaks his relationship with the Lars, and that's why he's told to stay away from Luke, and that's what pushes him deeper into hiding. So I would mm. suggest that that would make a fantastic story. You don't need to send him off-world. You just need to make the world he's in compelling and interesting and yeah. textured and full of vibrant characters and stakes. Give it some stakes. Give it some weight. Mm. You do that, you've got a movie. Just sending him up into space is nothing. Yeah. Okay. Paul? Sorry, I was on mute. Okay. Well, what was she saying about us? What was she saying? What was she saying? It wasn't. Oh, well, that's convenient. <laughs> Nothing. I thought I answered. I thought I answered all this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you already done question two? Uh, how does I? Well, no, they mentioned it earlier. All right. Well, I thought I'd give you a go. Okay. Well, uh, see what they said. Look above. <laughs> this okay, hosting please. thing's difficult, isn't it, Steve? Yeah, oh. it's, it's harder than it looks. I think, um, yeah, I was going to say, please, if you want to see me host an entire episode, put your answer. Oh, Mark, on. there's a challenge. I'm, I'm not doing it because it, it, I'd oh. rather go and Mark, boil my Mark, Mark, Mark. Can you know I say actually, episode we, 100? Can we, yeah, can we make this a thing? Rob, can we like, Rob, maybe raise money for charity or something? Rob, put, yeah. put a poll in the VIP group right now. Done let's, on yeah, it. Let's see how we get on with that. Right, Steve, yep. you've got, if people put you in the big seat, you've got to step up. I'll do it. I don't care. I Bring can it. Up and wing anything, son. I was born <laughs> winging it. All right. Well, you've still got, you still got part three born. of this question, so let's get on with that so we can move on with the right. news. Um, question. Silence. Pray <laughs> silence. I'm, I'm it goes to my head. That's why I can't do it. The power. Um, okay. Is Snoke using mind control, and is that what Luke is hiding from? Um, this is an interesting question, isn't very it? Interesting. I think the answer is no, because I think just Kylo's very weak-minded, but I not, don't think necessarily Snoke is using mind control on him. What do you think, Robert? Uh, hmm. I quite like it, to be honest, as a, as a concept goes. It's quite neat, isn't it? I like the Ray, idea, I just don't yeah. think I don't. I, yeah, I'd go with that. Actually, I think it's unlikely, but I, it kind of sounds cool. I like the idea that there's somebody who. It's not that he's stronger than Luke. It's that he possesses a certain power that Luke can't counter. And it's not that Luke is weaker. It's just that he's in that particular instance he can't compete mm. in that particular battleground. So he's distancing himself because, um, uh, because the alternative is that he puts himself at risk and he puts the entire galaxy at risk of being controlled by a, an external force. I, I dig that a lot. It's great. I really do. It's a really, yeah. it's a really, this is one of the most interesting sort of twists on the Snoke, um, like the predictions and the Snoke theories. It's the most interesting one in a long while. Hmm. We don't really know his, the extent of his power, do we? So it's kind of open to him. A lot of interpretation. Well, there's a lot of speculation at the moment that maybe he's using some sort of magic. And um, we've seen this in the animated series. What Paul Daniels magic? Not not that sort of pick a card. Idolize card. me, Debbie. Paul, Woo-hoo. have you just posted that poll? Oh, t- oh, come on! I was literally just doing it. <laughs> I was tough to do it. Are you, t- Mark, told me to do it. No, he didn't. I said. Let's he just, should host and let's just all right. Shut up. It's there, it's there. It doesn't matter. Steve, right, take I'll control of your show. No, 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 it's fine. If, you, if it's there now, would you rather nice. read to see? Who <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> One of you's going over my knee. All right. Sorry, I'm oh, just my. licking Jen's batter. Hey, oh, when you put oh, the answers my. in, Rob, Steven, okay, you're not going to do Steven, it now anyway. When you're when hosting, you've got to hurt these cats, dude. You've got to hurt these cats. I can't. They're incorrigible. Right, listen, because in a minute, Mark's going to be back in the hot seat and he won't take any of this shenanigans. 
Mm. So don't give Good it. Save. Right. Um, I've forgotten where we are, Mark. Uh, Take Paul, over. Paul, you need to comment on um, question three. Sno- could Snoke be using it's some kind using of... using mind control of what is it looks exactly. from? Hang on. It's not using mind control in relation to what? In relation to... Because this was based over on the, the people open. around him. Uh, what? You disappeared then. So people influ- around him. Influence on the people around him. What, continually? Hmm. Brownie yeah, batter. but I'm only basing Snoke upon the current trilogy. And this was based around the Obi-Wan Kenobi. Hang on, Steve's trying to communicate. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm licking Jen's salty batter mix. That is a euphemism. Oh, um, it's really nice. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. It was TLJ based. Is Snoke using mind control? Um, I'm not entirely sure he is, no. 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 He's a manipulator, I, I, if nothing else. I, don't, I think he's a manipulator with speech, though. He's an orator. Yeah. He's he's clever. Yeah. And plus, I mean, he's the largest hologram in the in the first order. So I think he's already got. I think he's got a false sense of power, though. I think there's projection. I mean, obviously, no, excuse my terminology. It is projection. Li- but I yeah, think, there's some in the literal sense. Yeah. Yeah, but at the same time, his projection is much more than he is. But that doesn't matter right now. So, but that's also really intriguing because I think later we're going to find he's actually a more slightly more diminutive figure. Um, but it's you're on the back foot at that point. So this could be really, really clever stuff from Ryan Johnson. I, I think um, Anthony put the nail in the head. He kind of talked himself out of this then series why straight away. Why whatsoever? Well, no, your opinion is valid, <laughs> but what I'm saying is Hushly. Anthony's already talked himself out of this. Uh, if you're a baddie, you don't want to rely on <laughs> mind tricks. You want to be bad because you can talk badly to people, you can coerce them, mm. and you can use stuff like that. Well, yeah, but that's, it, half, yeah, that's more, half of it, isn't it? It's like yeah. if you can if you can talk to talk, you don't necessarily need to walk to walk on many occasions. Well, it is a sense so. of mind control, isn't it? Really? No, it, it, it's it, no. That's threatening behaviour. It's yeah. that's power. It's, yeah. chari- it's not it's mind control. Charismatic actually, leaders. It's yeah, the sort of thing you've seen right you're, now. You're choosing still how you're reacting to that. Look at David He's Miscavige. Look at David Miscavige on stage at these Scientology rallies. You've got this. He is a diminutive character, but he's up there on a huge stage, surrounded by all the props that come with it, and then he has a huge following. Now, I'm not making a judgment on Scientology and, and, and what that position is. <laughs> what time people goes. coming back to the earth and getting and bombing the, the their spirits in volcanoes? All right, I don't know how one faith. If you if you had top trumps and you put all the faiths <laughs> up against each other, but that's we're not here to debate that. I'm just saying you get a, skilled, have a mass debate. You get a skilled orator <laughs> on a Sorry, stage, Tom. surrounded by all the trappings, and people look at it and they elevate. You know, they elevate that, and I think that's what Snoke's done. The one problem I've got with this, and I do find it very intriguing that this mind control thing could be one of Snoke's abilities. Um, the one problem I've got with that is it takes away any agency from Ben Solo if he's yeah, just been tricked that? into it. And, I, and That's I, why I don't want it to happen as yeah, well. Yeah, I much prefer that to... Ben makes his own decisions. Yeah, he's working on his own conscience. Exactly. Or what he thinks is his own conscience. Regardless, he still thinks he's in charge of his own destiny right now. Yeah. And I hate the idea of that being able to be manipulated because I, it, it also becomes a quick cop-out on mm. what you might want to do with a story long-term. So, no, 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 no. Mm. Oh, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't being himself. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> you know, There's the redemption we were looking for. <laughs> would you say that about... We wouldn't say that about Anakin, would we? When Anakin went into the temple and he slaughtered those younglings, he did it because he thought that was going to help him get what he wanted. And that was the yeah. sacrifice he was willing to make. He was willing to kill those children and and the part of his soul that died with it. Yeah, but a certain amount of moralism needs to be involved somewhere along the line, doesn't it? Yeah, and at the end of his life, in, and he was able to um, atone for those things... I don't know really if that all weighs up, but he, you know, um, he managed to atone for that stuff by saving I, his son and destroying the Sith. I'm pleased that Luke was able to sort of redeem his father and vice versa and so on and so forth. But let's look at the reality of this. It was, um, what's his name? Oh, God. What's the actor's name? Sorry, Anakin, the actor. Hayden Christensen. Yeah, it was him that killed the kids. So he should never got a force ghost. Older Anakin was completely entitled to one because he didn't hurt anyone. Yeah, for legal <laughs> for legal reasons, Rob. Can you uh, <laughs> can you back can you slow walk us out of that legal? No, I'm, I'm I'm trying to make sure that we slow walk Paul out of it because that's what it sounded. Like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just uh, double right. checking. Hayden Christian. Right. I mean, never killed any it, children. No, no, no. Yeah, okay, but, okay, but you know what I mean. And from the point of view of what we saw on screen, 
Yeah, it, it was, was young, Aiden's young character Anakin. that swung the thing. So no, redemption is impossible at that point. That's why you can redeem the old version, but not the young version. I'm being silly, chaps. I do apologise. It's all right. <laughs> As if we ever do anything but be silly. Um, but Steve, no, yeah. Snoke, I really silly, hope guys. Snoke is not using... I mean, we've also mentioned before the, the idea of almost like a, a possession element. I don't want that to be the, the idea that people are not completely in control of their destinies, which was a large part of things like Jedi, wasn't it? About you controlling your destiny and so on and so forth. It was a large part of it. And that is actually what I think enabled Luke to become who he became at the end. So, you know, leave people in control of their paths. Yes. Mm. Yep. Here, here. Well said. Right, Steve, you can wrap up your question now then. Anthony, you're not only lovely, but you are deeply of troubled, uh, disturbed, no, intellectual and. You obviously have a knowledge that will ne- these guys will never be able to comprehend or ascertain. And I feel for you, mate. And if you want oh, to stop listening, be yeah, my as somebody, guest. As somebody who I'm sure can sympathise with the position of being the smartest one in the room, Mr. Steve, no doubt does on a daily basis. Of course, he's up with See, three badgers and a wasp. <laughs> <laughs> what, whatever Rob said then, I'm sure it was of some meaning. Again, people like us <laughs> won't understand it, but let's leave him to it. I'm sure he's having fun. And yeah. Steve, you're awesome. Keep up those wonderful comments. But yes. Just don't give them to Rob. I will, I will, the irony I will is... I will agree with that. Thank you, Anthony, for your question. Steve doesn't even remember the beginning of the question. For Can I jump out. off this train now? Because it's hurting my head. <laughs> okay, mate. Mark, I can't, I can't do it. Oh, okay. Where's the, where's uh, the Steve, poll, by the way? That's, unfor- that's unfortunate because the poll is currently running away with yes. <laughs> Where is the <laughs> poll? Are, it's oh, in the VIP please. Group. Is it really... <laughs> Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's beautiful. So right. there were three. There's three options. Just so people for people who are kind of making sure it's all above board. Um, <laughs> hell yes, hell no, and do we have to listen naked? Hell no <laughs> doesn't have a single choice against it. The other two have three and two respectively. I won't say which ones, but it's pretty clear that people are on board with this. There you go. I've so, got my dinkle out now. Sorry, no, it's not about getting a dinkle out. I th- I think we it's might already go to out. a quick break. <laughs> well, now, now that we've entered, <laughs> never been away. Now that we've entered Dinkle territory, we're going to call a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to jump straight into some Star Isn't Wars that space news. Balls? <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Cool. Better than Dinkle, then. <laughs> What's more family friendly? Wee wee. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> oh, I thought we'd finish. <laughs> so did I. If you'd like to support what we do here at Talk Stars, you can do so by becoming a TSW sponsor. For as little as £1 per month, given securely via PayPal, you'll help us keep the lights on here at Talk Stars. When you become a TSW sponsor, we will automatically make you a TSW VIP. As a VIP, you'll get access to an exclusive stream of content that provides you with a daily podcast called the TSW Kessel Run, Membership to the TSW VIP Facebook group. Priority releases of shows such as the TSW Toy Box and TSW Comics. You'll also get priority access to the TSW Feature Com series and weekly Facebook Live and AMA sessions. There are also newsletters and a monthly prize draw. Head to talkstarwars.co.uk forward slash support and become a TSW sponsor today. And the force will be with you. Always. And we're back. So that was our sponsorship spot for the VIP. If you're not a VIP already, what are you doing? Get on board. It's um, We're going to go straight into some Star Wars news now. There's quite a lot of spoilery stuff in here or things that I think could be spoilery. spoilery I so um, If you are nervous about spoilers, please jump out now. Um, for the rest of the show. We will catch wow. up with you next week. Yeah, because we, all we've got is things that could be considered spoilery. Apart from oh, this okay. first thing from last Fair year, enough. but Fair most enough. people won't be interested. Right. So, Last Jedi, potential spoilers be here. So, The Last Jedi, this was a poll, this was a thing that uh, Ryan Johnson put out on his Twitter account last week. He asked um, how many wipes we thought were in certain movies, which one, which Star Wars movie had the most transitions. Ooh. He gave three options, um, and Empire was the one out of the three with the most transitions. Really? The wipe transitions, yeah. Wow. And I, I voted for that. Um, only because of the other, it seemed to make sense compared to the other two options in the question. Mm-hmm. Um, but Last Jedi only has twelve transitions, twelve wipes. Not a lot, is it? No. 
Do you know what? Are they moving away from I it? I could give or? you my point of view, but you'll have to bleep. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. He's on the bleep roll tonight. Go give on, him no, one, it's fine. Late on him. What is who, your... gi- <laughs> <laughs> who gives a f? <laughs> honestly? <laughs> Well, we do because we're doing a Star Wars podcast. But why? Why do we give a f? Sorry, we gotta have something to start, talk yeah, about. I'll start, I'll start. Yeah, but what I mean is, why? I don't. I'm, I get why we're talking about it. Mm-hmm. My question is, why do we care so much? Why do we invest? People go to the nth degree. I'm as with long you. as I know what you mean. As long as it's not the iris wipe, which is stupid. And the iris, over, oh, the, the one whole screen of, going down. The whole screen goes down into a sort of tiny circle and then back out. Like the alien door on the. Um, the shit yes. when he's going she's going yes yeah, those yeah. little there's ones yeah. that do that Iris um, and it's sometimes they're used in a way that you look at it and you go that doesn't even make sense because people use it for things like eyes closing but that's not how eyes close unless you're a camera <laughs> See, I thought the Phantom Menaces ones were so obviously stuck in there they looked awful well the Phantom Menace was the is the movie with the most that had 55 wipes yeah. and how many to, did Empire have uh, that had something like 45 I think Oh, um, I thought you said Empire had the most. Uh, out, of, said- out of the options in the poll. Oh. Um, oh the Phantom right. Menace wasn't included in that, but this was something that he added wow. subsequently when somebody asked and he said Phantom Menace had the most. Um, the Force Awakens only had, I think, 14 or 17. It was really low. And uh, and then The Last Jedi comes in with 12. <laughs> um, the, Phantom, um, the Force Awakens <clears throat> had some really interesting ones, and I've included one here, a screen grab in the show notes, which yeah. is a transition from Nima Outpost on Jakku to General like Hux. It's jigsaw piece. It, it's like a smoke effect. Yeah. So it's the, the whole scene, it kind of gets all smoky and then it just wipes out and uh, and then you have Finn run into frame, I believe. What so are the bits at the bottom, like the, the rib? That's all stuff on, on Jakku in the marketplace. Oh, actually part of the marketplace. In the, in the actual after it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not just in the transition. No, 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 no. It's really, no. In, it's really interesting, and there's some interesting okay, ones. Okay, is the wipe left? Is the wipe going left or right? That's there. going from right to left. Okay, it's yeah. wiping so, off. Hang on. So, so it's, it's going from right to left. Jacku. We're going to Jakku. We're going to Jakku. We're going to Jakku. Yeah. So it's yeah. pre-image, not post-image. All right. Yes. Yeah. So are they trying to phase these transitional wipes out completely then by reducing so. the number? I don't think so, no. It no, just, they're paying okay. homage to Lucas and A New Hope. And and we already know Rogue One didn't have any. Did pacing we? as well. Rogue One didn't have any. No. Not a single one. So. Speed of bike. Um, it was me for a chance. Yeah. No, it that was, was me. A, that's a pod. You'll hear him go past me in a minute. There you are. Um, yeah, so that's interesting. I know what Rob means. It's not why are we why do we care but i think what the reason why we care rob is because people have been concerned when they were removed in rogue one and added for effect in the phantom menace i think part of that 55 in phantom menace is ridiculous that's what i mean it's it's like, oh, if it's just gratuitous then what's yeah. the point mm. yeah i agree with you there but i think you do need it needs to be done without thinking about it whoever's editing these movies Whenever they have a scene that where it's poignant to do a transitional wipe, then they do it. I think if you're putting them in so it looks like the original trilogy, then you're on shaky ground. Mm. Yeah, it is, it's part of the language of storytelling in Star Wars, without a doubt. Um, I don't think it's. I say I, I don't consider the the way it transitions from scene to scene as important as what's talked about in those scenes. No, of course not. I just I just don't see it as that important. No. I'm sure you know. It's just it's people, just, I'm sure there are people who disagree. Probably people who do, uh, you know, camera film, work, filmmakers, uh, yeah, yeah. film it, editing. Yeah, it will be. It'll be te- technically minded people, and it'll be. Mm-hmm. You know, it's part of the language. It's like shooting them in cinemascope, having that nice big wide picture. If you shot yeah. one in full screen, in full in full frame, it might not be. You know, that would be another break in the language of the storytelling, but. We've seen Rogue One take a few chances by dropping the opening crawl and having a cold open and not having any wipes. So, and I think it still works. And Paul, it's, you were saying earlier, it's your favourite Star Wars movie now. So these things, they're part of the tapestry of the film, but not absolutely necessary. It's funny, when you see them in um, an edited order, it just looks like a PowerPoint display. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It really does. Yeah. All, all keynote. Sad. All keynote. Other Who? presentation services are available. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Honestly. we're gonna we're gonna move on 
to um, this new image of Ray that came out this week via, I think it might have been Yahoo Movies. I'm not sure. I don't think they've really branded their... Oh, no, there it is no, I think the they've done, Yeah, that, that giant gold badge, I yeah, think, is, uh, is, their, <laughs> is their attempt to... Uh... Look at the subtle little talk Star Wars one I put on images I screen grab, and then there's this gigantic gold thing. Okay. Um, yeah. So this image of Ray came out this week. Bear in mind, none, these things don't just happen by accident, and they don't just choose an image at random. What is this image telling us? Uh, they've used the Dum Dum uh, prop from Night in the Museum. <laughs> no, it's not. It's Bendu, she, and she's beat she's the living hell glaring, out of you. She's glaring down at a robe, which says to me she's just killed Luke and made him one with the Force. <laughs> Um, and she's just about to. We've, you know, we've been overestimating his influence on the film. She kills him in about six minutes, probably by accident, uh, and then spends the rest of the movie just going around the galaxy by herself. I need you to see correct. The, you see the ledge level with her knees. Yeah, yeah. She had about fifty porgs all lined up, and she's just finished golfing them all into the water. <laughs> <laughs> she's lemminged those porgs. Yeah. Right, I'm just going to correct Rob there. That's not a robe. It's a bag and her iPhone oh, yeah, 7 idiot. Plus is laying on it. She's just got a text oh, well, message just, just what she's looking it, at. Which is sensible. She's got a nice bum. Finn's just... Finn's Did just I think that out You've said that out loud, sir. Um, so what do we know about this? Well, this looks very much like um, Force Awakens, End of Force Awakens, Ray. For a start, yep. not the Jedi robe. We've still got the triple bun, and the the costume is what she wore at the end of the first movie, right? Well, I don't think she took a change in clothes. And she's it's got dark, the star. She darker coloured one, slightly darker one. She had, she had a jacket over the top of that. Oh, vest. okay. I think maybe the she had sleeves for the jacket as well over the arm wraps. I'm not um, sure. I'm not sure. The trousers and the boots are exactly what she was wearing at the end of. Yeah, um, Force Awakens, and she's got the staff. So I was looking at this, and we've seen in the behind the scenes reel, we've seen her training with that staff, haven't we? Seen her training against this. It was a cardboard box standing in for this um, monolith, but she was definitely training with the staff. And uh, this makes me think that she turns up on Arc Two, Bless you. speaks to Luke about training. He flat out refuses, so she goes right. and starts training herself. She goes. When, and sorry, when you say she's mm-hmm. training with the staff, you mean when yeah. he says this, it's so much more. No, that's lightsaber. I was going to say. Yeah, no, no. This at this point in the film, I think that he said no, no, and she's gone mm-hmm. off and started to train on her own. Right. And he's I seeing. See. He's seeing tenacity and resilience in her, and he realizes he's, he's dealing with somebody cut from the same cloth as Leia. Mm-hmm. And there's no getting around this. She's there yeah. to keep. She's, it's not like she says, okay, gets back on the Falcon and flies off. She just says, well, if you want to train me, I'm here. I'm going to train myself. And my own Jedi until you agree. blackjack and hookers. I'm sure there's something in Karate Kid that's a, something similar to this. And I'm very much getting that Daniel, Mr. Miyagi kind of feel from these two. Okay. She will not give up until he caves in and says, right, okay, I'll, I'll give you what you need to be going on with. But this is what I think this shot is. It's her training alone. But I do like it. I think she's going to attack Luke with that stick, not in a nasty way, but in order to... It's time for the Jedi to end. As he's walking out, she's like, I'm going to end you, pal. (laughs) No, but in order to defend himself, maybe he's made a vow not to ever turn a lightsaber on again. Because it's interesting that in the next picture, he's not got a lightsaber. Mm. And that kind of points me towards a a vow of... Sure, that's A vow of celibacy of the lightsaber kind yeah or peace rather than yes. celibacy but yeah peace. so maybe she um maybe she attacks uh, him in a, a way that he has to defend himself you're right and there, then Paul. it all kicks off yeah no i'm just i mean it's just it's a picture of her in some kind of training pose she's training with both period this could be long after she has a conversation with luke of any kind and she's intermittent between lightsaber and staff without both who knows, you know, sitting on the floor, meditating, lifting rocks, all sorts mm-hmm. of things could be happening. And I think that cave might be behind her. Hmm. Yeah. Is so- that rock? Is there any scope <clears throat> for that rock being of some kind of significance in the sense that it's used as a place to train with a saber? It looks very like it's holy and yeah. it's got chunks. It's out holy. It. As in full of holes. Yeah. They uh, like, they look like it's been hit and carved. Yeah. 
could could they be hitting it with a saber? Yeah, and it's really strong rock. Yeah, that's a good observation, actually, Steve. Yeah, could could nah, well be just a rock. It also it does a look a little rock. bit like the Bendu as well, Steve. That's what I said earlier. I said it was Bendu. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good mm. image. Like it, make a nice wallpaper if it didn't have that stupid great big gold stamp on it. Yeah. All right, they need to edit that out in the film. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, it'll really call attention to itself. <laughs> Let's move on to the next image then. So it's a picture of Luke that came out. It was on the front cover of a Hungarian film magazine this week, and this image popped up in the group. Adam Sheldon shared it. It's um, the raw file without any text or anything on it, showing us, giving us a look at a slightly darker Luke. Gents, what do you think of this? He's gorgeous. He He's gorgeous. lovely. Any? Oh, it's conspicuous by its absence, isn't it? That lightsaber. Yes, very much so. It's probably no. In, it's a magazine shot. Doesn't have to have a prop. In R2. He's a Jedi, mate. Yeah, mate. it doesn't have to have a prop. He's still Luke. I would like you to find any film magazine with a front cover with a Jedi in it where he isn't holding a lightsaber, mm, and it's fun. not a. Bo- Body shot, and it's the body shot. That is as really, in with the hand. That's a really interesting challenge. Um, okay. Pulled first, on it. First thing that comes to mind with this image is that Luke's wardrobe is very deliberate. I think very dark, isn't it? it? It's exactly. It's dark and it's layered, and I think that's communicating what this character, the approach to this character, is going to be precisely that. Mm. Yeah, possibly. That's what we get in Star Wars, isn't it? That's that when when we first meet Luke and he's in his his little. Um, judo suit, his little white judo suit, and then yeah. we, and then when we pick up in the next movie, he's wearing a grey, the grey fatigues mm-hmm. that he wears on Bespin, and then by the third movie, he's dressed in black. So you, yeah. you're communicating through the visual appearance of these characters the same way as Lucas did with location and um, and comp- composition of shots around locations. Um, you're you're communicating a subtext. Like on, I had this conversation with Mark Airy the other day when you're looking at the heroes in Star Wars, they're always from earthy planets. They're from warm, organic looking planets. And whenever you do with the Empire, it's always stark greys, blacks, and whites. And it's, and it's all very angular and very metallic. So you're, they're communicating a theme through the visual design. And I think that's extended into this image here. It's um, Luke being dark and layered. Princess layered. Princess layered. That's a that's a good image, that Steve. I've seen that before. Okay. Yeah, it's awesome. I've never seen that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's that's a really. So she's is that real or is that Photoshop? That's a real one. No, that's I a think real, a, one of the primary. I think that's a vanity. I think that's one of the Vanity Fair ones, isn't it? It's I been polished. So, yeah. That's beautiful, isn't it? Even I like that. that. That is really, really. Oh, you can see more of the stuff on the floor. Right, and you notice there's a star. So she's got a double ended so. star. She's so also got the bands in her hair, so just like I said, she's intermittently Oops. training between the two. Is that a double-ended lightsaber there? What have you, what have you put in, Paul? I haven't. Oh, oh sorry, I thought that's you... me. I've just put that picture. No, in. Paul's just happy because he got one right for a change. Uh, I kid. Beg your pardon. So, I kid. So is, I kid. Is that's... that a double-ended lightsaber on the floor? No, that's no. a staff. It's a staff. What? But it's short. The same or stuff we were looking at a minute ago. Yeah, perspective. Perspective, Steve. Part of it's it far looked, away. No, it looked it looked overly short. No, Dougal, these uh, cows are far away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, part of the staff is far away, Steve. That's all it is. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. But well, it's still yeah. an awesome shot. No, I think if based on those at, two photos. Paul, Steve, can you see the Paul's water, the horizon? Mm. Yeah. Those islands in the back, they're a long No, way they're or... small islands nearby, aren't they? Uh, okay. <laughs> Not the way they're sitting on the horizon. Um, in any right, case... I, I get it. From those two anyway. images, I would say Paul's theory makes absolutely perfect sense. Doesn't it? Yeah. This is training absolutely. with both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, you're right. If you look at the, if you look at the ground, and weird thing is, where's the Bendu rock? Um, probably Bendu. just to the left. It's, yeah, it's, it's been slashed just enough. Out. Just now, let's have a look for that. Island. Okay, look at the look at the ground. Ah, no, it's a slightly different perspective. Yeah. It's a slightly different. Ever so sli- yeah, ever so slightly spun round. But then it should be right in front of you. Because there's an island. There's another no, island. No, the bag's there. in the right place. No, this... Um. If she could, maybe she's on a different part of the island. Right, okay, moving on. Um, Luke looks fantastic. Anyone got anything they want to say about this image of Luke before we move on to Han Solo? Uh, no. It looks a little menacing. Mm-hmm. He's definitely not completely on our side of good for whatever reason. 
I'm sure deep down he's a good guy, but I think he's teetering on self-defense kind of... I'm prepared to, to do whatever is necessary to protect what is, you know, right in his mind. I don't think he's entirely rebel stroke Jedi bound at this point. Okay. I think he's got a little not I'm not necessarily saying necessarily saying grey, but I think he will he'll go in whatever path he thinks is best he's got his regardless own agenda. Of he might have, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can see that in his eyes. And this stuff this this clothing looks like he's made that. Yeah. Possibly Explain out of why that the comes bottom left hand corner is red. Yeah, no, I think it's just a. Just an well, no, but we had those images, didn't we? Those the the one sheets that were released. Everybody was wearing sort of red one splashed sheet. Yes. colors. Yeah, and stuff. yeah. That is apparent his, uh... again in this image, I think. So, hmm. this yeah. image I'm putting in now. Oh yeah, um, no, it's, there's that little sort of waistcoat over the top. Doesn't really. Oh, she got warm. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, that image I've just put in. Has anyone so seen she... that one? Yeah, it's a shot from the end of Force Awakens, mate. Yeah, but yeah it was a I film. Saw, I saw the ago. film. No, it was a couple of years ago. I know, but I, has anyone seen this image? Because I didn't realise that she was standing that far away from him. No, no, no. She's really small. <laughs> yeah, t- she's like three <laughs> eleven. Oh, this listen is in perspective. Doesn't work. Episode eight. Oh, that's when away. the camera zooms around at the end, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And fl- oh, I see. Yeah. November Little rain. Bit, All right, let's move yes. on. Um, Luke looks. Wicked smart, and I really like that dark. Co- and it's a shame that action figure is not going to come out tonight. Otherwise, I would buy you it. You would have a, a boner. I would buy that. Yes, for a dollar. Okay, uh, Han Solo, a Star Wars story or whatever. Um, <laughs> Donald Glover. <sighs> Donald Glover. He's a he's la- who's snoring. Shh. Donald Glover's oh. Lando will sport a beard in the Han Solo movie. Hello, um, what are we here? And it looks awesome too. Is that real? That moustache? It looks like someone's it's, photoshopped it. Yep, yeah, this is him on his last day. It's wrapped. Mario. He last day shooting, really? This is his last day shooting. Last Saturday, oh, they cool. wrapped Don Glover. And or la- I think he probably wrapped on is Friday. Is that Chewie behind? That's got to be Chewy behind. Uh, there's Ron something, Howard, isn't, isn't there? Yeah, there's something there. Oh. Pro- probably is Chewy. What's interesting is Donald Glover's hair looks like the guy out of the IT crowd. Yeah, yeah more. Yeah. That that moustache wow. is Lando all the way, isn't it? Pretty it Lando. Looks a bit, and Lando's was very polished. Yeah, but this I is a much honest. younger version, isn't it? It's going to be a yeah, little no, bit more I, more. Yeah, okay. So he was a bit more punky and he's, his dignity grew, I'm assuming. He's definitely into his appearance because we've seen his wardrobe. So he's definitely got part of that sort of... Um, he's definitely that close God, horse hope, that we meet. I hope they save this movie. I don't think it needs saving, Steve. Well, I just hope it didn't need saving, and if it did, I hope it has. <laughs> no, All change, right. Change of direction doesn't mean movie equals ruined. It's just the staff changed. They are members of staff. I want to be with Paul when he walks out of that movie, please. I want to see what he says. <laughs> that that will most likely happen. No, because the idea of spending an hour and a half with Steve is devastating. <laughs> What do we think oh, of... Uh, horrible thing to say. What do we think of Lando's look? If I had a heart, you'd have broken it. Oh, goodness me. All right. Rob? Who's the guy? Oh, I'm, 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 I'm going to come to you. Mark, I'd love to answer your question if Steve would be quiet. Go on, then. Answer it. Right. Uh, he lo- <laughs> he I like him. Bit, he looks a little lampoonish. Really? Uh, yeah. I'm not... I mean, uh, the pirate chin... And the, the, compared to Billy D. Williams, he he looks a little cheeky piratish too much. I think. Yeah, well, that's, I think that's, Billy that's, D. Williams looks pretty cheeky piratish in Empire Strikes Back. No, he doesn't. He's a damn cool M. Yeah, but he looks uh, like he started off as a bit of a cheeky pirate and then settled um, down. No, I see. I see dignified black man. <laughs> so you're obsessed with race, Paul? Huh? <laughs> no, you, I'm yeah. kidding. Come Paul on, sees Baron so sensitive today. No, right. but yeah, but he is. That's the thing. He is. Mm. But obviously, I mean, how, how many years is this before, Mark? Roughly, what are we thinking? Um, this is I, probably about four. Anything about four fifteen to eighteen? No, eight? It starts at eighteen and ends at twenty. Oh, right, okay. um, oh, it's four. a time period piece, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. So bands a number of different ones. There's there's probably going to be about f- between four and six years, I think. What prior to Billy D. Williams? Prior to yeah. a new no no prior to a new hope. So whatever. Oh, so about eight years then before yeah. Empire. That makes no sense either. Anyway, that's a conversation for another day. Mm. I thought oh, Alden Ironreich was cast 
to be a young Han Solo. If you're four or five, yeah. If you're four or five years, you're not. <laughs> you're not that. You might as well have. Just, you might as well have. You know, signed Harrison Ford again with some prosthetics. No, it depends on how young. How I thought this old. was fifteen to twenty years. Prior. So did I. I'm no, 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 no. Well, he was only. Han was only twenty-eight in A New Hope, right? Uh, he looked hard. I mean, older. maybe uh, thirty-five. Though. Harrison was thirty-five. Harrison was thirty-five, but okay. George's okay. take on it was that Han Solo was twenty-eight. I still, honestly, all, excuse my naivety. I've got my hands up, but this is only 20, a few years prior to a new hope. Yeah, yeah, he's twenty-eight now. You put a small bullet in my hopes for the movie. Oh, really? Cool. No, I wanted this to be at least a generation when there were kids. Not kids as such, but <laughs> the cold no, open you know, is going to be kids, but at a teenagers. The cold open like, will be him at eighteen, and then I think we're going to go into the movie proper with him. And the way I've been looking at it is Beckett's almost like Fagin, and these kids are almost like his orphans, and they and they are basically pirates. Instead of being pickpockets, they're just pirates and smugglers. The pickpocket or two. So it opens with Han Solo trying to get that pigeon off of the off of the roof for the reward. <laughs> Let's let's move on because we gotta get like. a few more bits a few more bits put to bed before yep. we can yeah, run I'm off to right. Toys R Us. Go go two hours yet? No, they've got to go and make love first. I've got, got two hours I've yet. got to edit a podcast. <laughs> All right. Will, a spoon Rob Stephen getting going. Will Mezcanata appear in Han Solo. A member of the Funko staff was discussing um how great the Han Solo pops, Funko pops are. Um and they listed the Lupita Lupita Nyong'o amongst the cast. Uh, I've put a link okay. in the show notes so people can go out to that article. But he was listing sort of Alden and um, Amelia Clark, and uh, and he put Lupita Nyong'o in there as mm. well. Um, so it seems to be suggesting that Mez Kanata could be in this movie, unless well, he got her confused. And, her and Han are very old friends. Mm-hmm. So go for it. I don't yeah, I, 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 quite like, I actually quite like the character. I don't think I've I said love the idea. Before. It's not like she's going to have idea. a massive role, is it? No, I don't but think she, she needs no, to. She doesn't short. need to. Yeah, she doesn't need. Well, yeah, there's that. But she doesn't need to have like a ten, you know, twenty plus minutes of screen time to be cameo. useful. Yeah, she can have a cameo. Makes yeah. they've I, established I love, that cool. history. I love, I love the character. I there you go, Steve. Mascanata is another one with um, eye things. Or is that the one you mentioned? Yeah, no, yeah, that's yeah. doing yeah. something about. Oh. But they're not for sight correction because she takes them off to look at people, which is weird. Well, it's lots of people sight. with glasses take yeah. their glasses off to look at other things. Yeah. Aren't you supposed to use these for computer work, she says? Do you remember when we used to get oh, together and talk about v- Star Wars? Do you use them? Yeah, vaguely. <laughs> I should have just called this podcast <laughs> Talk Stuff. Um, talk- so I think I've got, I've got the, I've got the mark sewn up on that one, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> is Master Arthur helping the Resistance connect with some underground slices in The Last Jedi? Are we, Who's are DJ? We, are we moving on? Uh, but yeah, he said yeah. Del Paul's in charge. His character. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, yes. So you were saying about how her role could be small in hindsight. It certainly appears to be small in The Last Jedi. And um, there is speculation at the moment that her only contribution to the story of The Last Jedi is that she will connect the Resistance in the form of Finn and Rose with the Slicer DJ. Um... I had a conversation yesterday, uh, well, it was a Twitter exchange um, with Jason Ward from Making Stars, and we uh-huh. were talking about um, what happens. Why do Finn and Rose need to connect with DJ? What's the importance? On, on their recent episode, episode of their podcast, Now This Is Podcasting, uh, Jason suggested that it was the resistance needing money. Uh, but with the destruction of Hosnian Prime, all their support has dried up, and they need cash um, okay. to to stay in business, essentially. Um, but I messaged Jason and said, Do you, with the um, introduction of the concept of light speed tracking, which was leaked in that toy commercial that came out a couple of weeks ago, I wondered if perhaps they needed DJ to hack in to light speed tracking system to find Snoke and his Megastar mm-hmm. Destroyer. Yeah, and my suggestion was that perhaps Snoke's permanently in hyperspace, and that's how he's avoiding detection mm. by remaining in hyperspace. That's all the time. kind of cool. It's a cool visual, isn't it? It's a nice idea. Yeah, big time. Um, Jason did come back with he th- he thought that 
perhaps the light speed tracking might come into play, but it's more likely to be that Finn and Rose are going to the Mega Star Destroyer to disable the light speed tracking right. because Jason's heard that most of the film, um, the First Order are hunting the Resistance. Which makes so sense. It's like they've gone into the belly of the beast to disable the tools they're using to try and find the Resistance to buy them some time. Mm-hmm. And then that's why... I said I mentioned I'd seen Ray on the box of a toy set, which is the Mega Star Destroyer with Finn yeah. and Rose. So it would seem to fit that if the, if Finn and Rose went on this mission, they find DJ to locate the Mega Star Destroyer, get the technology they need to bring down the light speed tracking, so they buy the resistance some more time. Ray learns that Finn's put himself in great peril, leaves her training to rescue him. Then you've got an echo of Empire. So and it's a bit too much of an echo for me, personally. A bit too much, is it? What do you guys yeah. think? Steve? Um, well, can you give me a synopsis to the question? Because I did nip off to the loo and only caught the arse end of it. Just that um, Finn and Rose will be going to um, the Mega Star Destroyer to take down some technology that would help them find the Resistance. And when Ray learns that Finn's put himself into trouble... She goes, leaves her training to go and save him. Yeah, it snaps of a lot of previous stories. Doesn't it? Sorry, yeah. I was on mute. Sorry. What do you think, Paul? It, it's a bit. I'm, I'm with Rob. Uh, I think it's. A, I think it's a bit too repetitive. Good to so close. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well. Yeah, but um, Rogue One as well. <laughs> you know, fashions are revisited, so we'll have to wait and see. Mm. Uh, but I don't like the idea now. Yeah, I, I. I'm with you. I think it's. Too cl- it could be considered too close, but I think it depends it's another- how sh- uh, it depends how her relationship with Finn. It's it's hardly family yet, is it? No, but there's definitely something. There's definitely there is. some. There's some love between them, enough to motivate her. I think. And think of it from Luke's position. If he sees her making the same mistakes he made, seeing it from his perspective. Does that improve his position or does it reaffirm his fears? You know, seeing history repeat itself with Ben, is he going to see her making his mistakes? Yeah, which is, I think he'd confl- he'd have a conflicting situation there, big time. I think, it's, I think it's an interesting idea for the third act of Last Jedi that that would be, certainly from Finn and Rose's point of view, that they'd be... It's almost like a suicide mission, isn't it? You get in there to take down this thing. How do you get out? The thing is, we've also got the situation. It might have been might have been a slight element of comedic effect applied to it, but she already did that several times in Force Awakens. I think, <laughs> I think it's time that Finn stood on his own two feet a bit. I'd rather Poe went through the rescue situation than her. Ah, yeah, that's kind of interesting. Uh, sometimes I am kind of interesting. Mm. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. Last thing of the night, then. This is Star Wars Episode Nine news, which we rarely ever get. Um, could Ray be returning to Jakku in Episode Nine? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, not in necessarily. Uh, sh- it may even be in the next film. Let me give you some definitely- more. Let me give you some more context. Is this came from two extras or background artists from the <laughs> some Force people Awakens. that have told us? <laughs> yeah, the two. Yeah. To I'm going to ask artists. you the hypothetical question now. Let me give you context. It's happening. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, this no, still no, doesn't. No. It still doesn't mean that there's any more. No, no, sure, sure. But it came from two people who portrayed background characters in the Force Awakens. They were interviewed on a podcast and said, "From what we hear, the return of Abu Dhabi, which okay. was where they shot some of the uh, Jakku stuff, but could right. easily be there to stand in for." Another desert Something planet. Else. Yeah, it could be a different desert planet. There's got to be more than two. Yep. Sand is sand. But sand the, sand. the idea That's of me. Ray returning, Paul, you started a thought. The idea of Ray returning to Jakku. Yeah. Uh, I think she's... Yeah, I can't remember the name of the guy. Who's um, Simon Pegg's character? Uncle, Uncle Blood. Blood. Yeah, Uncle she wants Blood, a bit... Yeah. She, I think she's going to want a little bit of a uh, finger-poking situation going on there. <laughs> what to find it's, out what, what happened fing- to her story. Fing- finger-wagging and so on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, no, the. I can't you can't, oh, Steve. No, no. I, 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 there's very little for her to return, oh. therefore, apart from him. Well, and the, well she yeah. left reasonably abruptly. <laughs> mm. We don't really know. I mean, we have an element of her 
initial story, but we don't have a full backstory on Ray at all yet, and there may be some. So, well, what's more, there's back, back to Jakku. what's more, there's backstory, there's backstory on Jakku too. It's not just a Ray. It's not yeah, just oh, not Jakku, uh, Jeddah. No, Jakku. Oh, crap. Yeah, Jakku. Mixed up. Yeah, no, you're right. The first time. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's, there's backstory to ja- uh, to Jakku as well, and yeah, I think she's the one. She's going to want to. Yeah, there was a bat- go, back, go back and get her pilot's helmet for start. The first um, <laughs> sort of decisive battle of the post Jedi era was um, was the Battle of Jakku, which was uh, five years after Jedi, and I'm sure. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, but isn't there a um, some sort of secret research facility on Jakku? Yeah, there's something that, what they're fighting. What they're fighting to defend. They're fighting to basically defend it so that they can so that they can get their stuff out of there. Yeah, pa- so maybe Palpatine, she goes back to that. Palpatine had a bunch of observatories on planets, looking into the unknown um, region. Uh, what's it called? Wild space now. Yeah, it's called. It, it, well, it's it's uh, unknown regions on most of the documentation that's floating around at the moment. And there's some stuff in the Battlefront game that refers it, it refers to it explicitly as unknown regions um and but on jakku even though one of palpatine's aides or like advisors comes to that planet to do something i think they find that there's already something there and then they there's something to do with sith holocrons they focus a lot of energy and it and it, it's enough energy if they focus it correctly it can destroy the entire planet mm-hmm. and then the the battle breaks out and the empire they suffer a big defeat and someone goes off into the unknown regions and finds Palpatine's personal mega star destroyer, this big thing. I can't think what it's called. The Eclipse or something. I can't remember. Um, oh, that's in Cat. That's in Legends, isn't it? Oh, this is all. The, uh, this Eclipse. is all. Oh, is it the Eclipse from Legends? Well, the, I think the, so. Palpatine ship, whatever it's called, is in the unknown regions of space, and and that's where they decide they're going to boot up the the new Empire from there. Um, I think right. it's Ray Sloan or something. I, I, I've not read the book. Oh, Ray, so yeah, Ray Sloan is the... Um, this is just stuff that I've absorbed via osmosis. I've not actually read any of it, but the... Anni- um, anni- no, not Annihilator. Yeah, Annihilator. So um, that's the importance of Jakku, that this thing is on there. I don't know whether or not they'll go into that on in on screen in one of these movies because that requires a lot of background knowledge. Or a lot of exposition, an info dump, basically. There in the is movie. that, yeah, yeah. Um, so it might be better if Ray returns to Jakku because it's you know these people have just said, oh, we might be going back to Abu Dhabi. It doesn't say Ray; could be anybody going. Yeah, it doesn't say Jakku. It doesn't say Jakku. It doesn't say. No, it could no. be the First Order going to Jakku. It could be yeah. Ray and Luke going to Tatooine. We just we don't know, mm. but it would make sense thematically if it was Ray returning to Jakku, the way Anakin went back to Tatooine. Yeah, and the way Luke went back to Tatooine. I think there's a little unfinished business there. Yeah. yeah. We also didn't didn't we talk about was it last week or the week before we talked about the possibility that she wasn't left she wasn't brought to Jakku and left there she was always there and then she was left and they behind. Left them. Yeah. 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 That was last week. So if she's part of something like let's say you know uh, an imperial research program mm. that uh, was was ongoing and then she got left behind when the last of the uh, her classmates, for lack yeah. of a better expression, um, went off planet without her. Mm-hmm. Maybe they looked for her, couldn't find her. Okay, yeah. That's another possibility. Yeah, it's very- that's the kind of stuff where you know they can, you know, it still would need a bit of exposition. But I think most things will. So yeah. I don't think we got, we can't be too. Yeah, you know, we got we got to balance exposition and over over elaborate document, you know, documentation yeah. and reliance um, on expansion. To be series. clear, is Jakku the plan? It, that we thought it might be yonks ago from scenes in Return of the Jedi, the orange planet in the distance no. when there are some space shots. It's not that. No, that thing that was around Endor. No, it's, it's not. No. no, okay. No, but it's um. But this is all like like Rob said. You you got to weigh up how much does it cost in screen time and exposition to set up something like that expanded universe story about Jakku and the observatories. And yeah. how much of it is a personal journey for the hero? And in this instance, I think it's much easier to to spend that screen time having Ray it go back to where she came from and, and realize because it's only really a lens that they can then view themselves through. When Anakin mm-hmm. goes back to to tattooing, the first thing he does is see himself in context and think, "Well, I'm I've come a long way from that little slave boy, 
Now mm. I'm this powerful person. I said I'd come back and free slaves. I've got bigger things to do with my life. And the same with Luke, he comes back and Tatooine seems so small. You know, he, he spent his life there, that was his world, but it seems so small when you've gone on to become this huge, you're a conquering hero. And now the same thing needs to be, we need to see Ray view herself in that way. She'd go back to Jakku and think, this is where I started and I thought so small. And now I've done all these amazing things. And that could be all it is. She might have something more practical to do within the narrative, but as part of that character's journey, that's what she needs to do is see where she, look at what she could have won, you know, if she had mm. stayed mm. there. She's seeing the path. The well, there's always a speedboat. <laughs> always a speedboat or a kitchen. Slaves would never be able to afford eye corrective surgery either. Just chucking it in there. I'm glad that we managed to bring it back to eye corrective surgery. To the really important questions, yeah. The question of the day. Right, let's wrap this thing up then because the clock is ticking and we've got things to do this evening for Force Friday. So, um, do. guys, you got anything you want to throw in before we wrap up for the evening? Stephen, got anything to say to your fans? Anthony Fan. and all the rest of you, shut up. <laughs> You that's, are that's rude, telling him to shut up. Anthony and all the rest of you, shut up. Right, thank you very much to my loyal followers. <laughs> Keep it up. Follower. Yes. The Steve yeah, follower. Anthony, thank you so much for doing so much damage. We will not be able to control this man now for another hundred episodes of this thing. So, Oh, please can someone put something that Mark would never say about me nice on the reviews? Give a five star review and say something. Mark has to read out something lovely about me, and he will hate every second of it. Thank you very much. Um, right. <laughs> so next week, get ready for Rob reading reviews. <laughs> it's going to be you. They're going to specify it. Put a poll in the Facebook. You no, know it's group. going to happen. Steve, Ooh. run a poll in Facebook. Oh, I don't oh. know how to use denied. Um, choose face, whatever it's called in oh, the it face. crowd. Shoes what face. is it in the it crowd? Oh, friend face. Friend face, thank you. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Right, thank you very much for listening to us again this week. Uh, don't forget, as Stephen's just been saying, head over to iTunes and leave us a five star review and take advantage of our Ron Burgundy guarantee. Whatever you write in there, even if it's about Steve and it's nice, I will read it as long as it's clean. So, if you want to promote something like a blog or a podcast, that might be the place to do it. Uh, you can also email us your questions and MP3s as voicemails to talkstarsinfo at gmail.com. That's talkstars, I-N-F-O, at gmail.com. Or you can reach out to us on one of our many social channels, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and more. With that said, guys, where can people find you between episodes? You can find me on Twitter, on Stephen underscore where, or Twitter and or YouTube at Wild About Nature. You will find me at moviescorenews.com. You'll find me on Twitter at moviescorenews, and you'll find me on Facebook at moviescorenews. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Rob Wade Vision, and you can find everything else I do that's not Talk Star Wars at emotionally14.com. Wonderful. You can find so, everything I do at talkstars.co.uk, and I'm on Twitter at Talk Star Wars. And in about an hour and a half, I'll be in a car park at Toys R Us. Um, an hour and a half? That doesn't sound good, mate. For a while, mate. That really doesn't sound good. <laughs> yeah. <It's tense>. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Boogie Nights? <laughs> There's toys in a million, all under one roof. I'm just, I know. I'm just trying to give myself plenty of space to cut sections out. Okay. <laughs> bit like that ship of sail I am editing reality alright thanks again and we'll see you guys next week bye bye come back now are you here come back on that speeder bike yeah seriously sorry about that one <laughs> Talk Star Wars is a proud member of the Star Wars Commonwealth Podcast Network find us at starwarscommonwealth.com alongside the Tumbling Saber Podcast the Generation X-Wing Podcast the TSW Roundtable the Sky Harbors Podcast and the Nerd Room Podcast Head to StarWarsCommonwealth.com Take your first steps to a larger world. It's a wrap. It's a wrap.